You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. It's you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Supernova. Nisus's path. So, y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chen, you are up. And let's go. Alright. <clears throat> Microdosing. Either way, it'll just be one cocktail. It's fine. Oh, excuse me. If you say so. Should I get anything for you? Nah, I'm good. Alright. And I get my way to the bar area. It's not overly crowded. Uh, one tequila sunrise, please. The bartender smiles and nods. As he starts preparing my drink, I retrieve my wallet. You know, handsome, I think you might enjoy a sex on the beach more. The voice came from behind. With a line this cheesy, the dude had better be hot. Luckily he is! I turned to see a pretty handsome lion smirking at me from his perch on the bar stool. Oh, really? He just winks, his expression growing even more cocky. Sorry, buddy, but not today. Ah, I'm with a friend right now. But if you'd like my number... Sure. He hands me his phone. There. All right. Nick, can I at least pay for your drink? Only if I get a text later. My cocktail was already in front of me, so the lion, still with that confident grin, slides the money over to the barkeep. Much appreciated. Robbie. I give him the finger gun. Catch you later, Robbie. I make my way back to the, to the Martin with a new spring in my step. Meh. <laughs> you look happy. I had just excited for our adventure. You're much better company than the fox. Oh, come on, Frank's fine, as long as he's not, uh, angry. Mm-hmm. I sip my drink for a time, letting my mind drift a little with the music. Oma's right. There is something to be said about the beat about the beats here. Since you mentioned it earlier, I guess I should ask, what can you do? Like, do you have a specialty? Of course, I deal in curses and blessings, like the sleeping curse I used at Frank's place. Oh, that's cool. The plan is to the plan is not to, but if we do end up in a fight, expect to be on your own. Combat thaumaturgy is not my area of expertise. I'm guessing that's also something you derive from your dogma. Since, like, the kind of spells you do is part of the structure, right? More or less. There's more to it, but that's the gist. Uh, more? Uh, like what? Templar, I'm not here to teach you thaumaturgy. Resist all you want, Martin. I can see you're enjoying talking to me about this stuff. After all, you jumped at the first opportunity to explain what magic means. Alright, alright. So you can cast curses and blessings? Shame you work alone. And it's for the best. I mean... Is it? You needed my help, didn't you? Hm. It's not help. Just a way to tip the scales even further. Ensure success. I distinctly remember you asking for Frank's help. Oman narrows his eyes, but ultimately he concedes his defeat with a huff. Fine. Perhaps I need a little backup from time to time. Heh. <laughs> Happy to be here. I can use some of my spells on you if you don't if you don't if you don't resist it like last time. Hmm, I'm not sure I can do that. But I know his spells can affect me normally. I almost fell asleep in the bathroom. Only the armor appearing helped me shake it off. Should I tell him that? Yeah. I think the armor repelled your curse, but you should be able to use a spell on me before that. It'd make things easier for us. Entering unnoticed was my intention. A simple curse of misdire misdirection should keep stray eyes from finding us. Come to think of it, isn't it odd none of the Sentinels mentioned anything about Templar's armor having this kind of resistance to magic? Maybe it didn't. The Baron didn't make note of that when he was telling me about its advantages. So you have no control over it. I shrug. I'm not quite sure how that would even work. Omen leans forward a little, his expression growing in intensity. But it is woven from a spell, from a spell, right? I can't think of any traditional superheroes with a similar ability. Well... The bracelet is almost certainly magical. Question is, should Omen know this? Uh... Huh. It seems like a very important decision, so... Yeah... Let's, uh... Change topic. What is the difference between a thaumaturge and people with superpowers? Omen leans back in his chair. Well, that's a complicated question. To put it in simple terms, the superpowered seem to... The superpowered seem to draw energy from duot and on instinct to accomplish one effect. A thaumaturge, on the other hand, with the right knowledge, rituals, resources, and time, could accomplish just about anything. Wait, superpowers are fueled by the same source? He nods. Oh, huh, I didn't realize Trinity had something to do with this unseen realm of yours. Whatever happened during the accident must have torn into Duot somehow. Wow. Before I have time to ask any follow-up questions, however, Omen taps me on the shoulder and points at something behind me. There he is. I turn around to follow his line of sight. 
Upon the second floor, leaning against the railing to look down at the dance floor, a tall deer is saying something to a couple men standing next to him. The owner of this place, Jim Bennett, or old Jimmy. We'll be stealing from him tonight. Oh? So, what, uh, do we wait until he goes to the bathroom and mug him there, or...? Omen laughs, but then shakes his head. What we're looking for isn't going to be on him. Uh, are you certain? Yes, I didn't come here for... I didn't come here unprepared. Uh, where then? Omen slides over closer so he has a better view on the dance floor, and points to a hallway tucked into a corner. Down there. So we just sneak there? Yeah. But first we wait for Jimmy to leave. He never goes out without a decent escort, which means less trouble for us over here. Sounds like a plan. My eyes wander back to the deer. It rankles me that he's clearly a known criminal, but he's allowed to just come and go as he pleases. I have a mind to stay behind after Omen gets his thing and wait for it and wait for this Jim to come back here. Let's see what he has to say at Templar. All right, stay still for a sec. I raise my eyebrow. The Martin, just, the Martin puts his hand on my forehead. His lips move wordlessly. There's a tingling on my head but it might just be from his touch. Meanwhile, there's a barely noticeable shine around his amulet. That should do it. Shouldn't we be worried about security cameras? Not at all. As I said, I came prepared. He touches the eye of Horus with his fingers as he speaks. As I'm gulping down the rest of my drink, the deer finally moves towards the staircase, with who I presume to be his lackeys in tow. Omen shakes his head at my questioning glance, as if to say it's not time yet. He probably wants to allow some time for the boss and his men to get far enough away. But I gotta admit, I'm growing a bit impatient. Not that this evening would be a waste even if nothing else, inter nothing else interesting happens tonight. Far from it. Either way, it's not long before Omen abruptly stands up. Let's go. Don't have to tell me twice. Walking past the dance floor, I keep an eye out for the bouncer, le the bouncer leaning against the wall near the hallway Omen pointed out. He pays no attention to our approach, and the Martin walks right past him. Before I do the same, with less than three feet between us, the bouncer's eyes turn to me, but then, as if I'm not there, his gaze wanders on. Neat! Nobody else stops us. Out of this omen holding his necklace with one paw as the Martin makes his way to a narrow staircase and down a floor. The next hallway is much the same, but omen turns right with no hesitation, then left, and comes to a stop in front of an otherwise unremarkable door. Locked, naturally. Shame, Nisus isn't around with his, with his lockpicks. Uh, you sure it's in there? When? Oh. Huh. <laughs> Whoa, that was cool. Come on. Going inside first, I'm greeted with what appears to be just a small office. The Martin skulks in, paw around the eye of Horus again, his eyes shifting from one side to the other before settling on top on the top right corner of the room. His gaze is locked on a nondescript filing cabinet there. As he reaches out to open the top drawer, however, I grab his arm and pull it away from the vines that erupt from it, vicious thorns like tiny blades all across their surface. Shit! What's that? Thaumaturgy. Oh, but I thought... Ah, no matter. I can undo the trap. But we shouldn't waste time. Now would be a good time to use that armor of yours. Don't need to tell me twice. I flex my fingers and simply stick my now armored hand into the drawer. The vines react, trying to wrap around it, but as soon as they surround the wrist, they begin to wilt and loosen. Heh. <laughs> At that point, sweeping the mass of tendrils aside with ease, I rummage around the drawer, my hand finally finding something solid. What I'm holding turns out to be an oblong piece of gray rock, or maybe metal rounded at the top and the bottom and small enough to easily fit in my palm. It has several purple-hued rings running up and down its otherwise smooth surface. Is this it? It appears so. I nod and slide the relic into my pocket. That was easy. I guess it was lucky I ran into you at the Anesis' place, huh? Heh, <laughs> yeah. Alright, let's... Is that a fire alarm? Exchanging a look with Omen, I step out to the door. I step to the door. Before I can open it, however, the same thorny vines sprout from the gaps between it and the wall, falling all across the surface and converging at the handle. The sword makes short work of it all, though. Yeah, that's definitely a fire alarm. And down the hallway... Stop! Hands in the air! we? Ooh. The pistol drops from the guard's grip and he sways in place. Templar! Here! He leans against the wall and sinks to the floor, asleep. Guess they know we're here now. Alright, stay behind me. We'll be out in no time. Lead the way! The main floor is pretty much empty by the time we're back. Apart from several armed men, that is. 
some of whom I noticed before we even leave the hallway. Dot behind the bar. Once I've made sure the path is clear, I'll shield you while we head for the exit. Got it. My protections will deflect some bullets if they come my way, but we better not push it. No problem. Ready? Yeah. I'm first to go, the Martin lingering in the shadows. Two of the guards have taken a position to the side, one standing on the stairs, another on the second floor, next to the railing where their boss had been earlier. They have submachine guns trained at me, but that's hardly a concern for Templar. Two more stand to the far side of the room towards the exit. The man blocking our immediate way, however, is a little more unusual. Oh. Can we help you, Templar? Yeah, you can get out of my way. I'm afraid I can't do that until we've made sure you haven't taken anything that doesn't belong to you. I stride forward, and despite his words, the possum takes a wary step to the side. But then he swings his left arm. The chain hits my wrist and wraps around it, and the possum gives it a light pull, as if to show me he's not letting go. Grabbing it on my hand, I free my hand and throw the chain back. Name? Temper. Well, Temper, don't test my patience. I'm sure your boss will be satisfied to hear you tried to stop me. My boss might hear that I succeeded. Hmm. Oh! Heh, <laughs> knew it. Guess this will be a fight after all. Omen chooses this moment to rush to the bar table. A single shot rings out, rings out, but the brown furred shape, unharmed, dashes behind the door and vanishes from sight. The chain lashes out again, leaving an orange afterimage in its wake. It hits my side this time before the possum snatches it back. The metal glories briefly where, briefly where the chain struck. I feel the now familiar weight of my sword as it forms in my hand. Templar, Temper's nervousness is palpable as he eyes it, which brings me a pang of satisfaction. He tries to create more distance between us, but I'm not about to let him. The hail of gunfire makes a hell of a lot of noise as it hits me, only to be safely deflected by the armor. Still, it's enough of a distraction that the possum makes his retreat while swinging the chains from the side. From the corner of my eye, I see both the guard on the stairs and two on the main floor moving to flank me. It might be a good idea to knock the superpowered threat out of the fight before dealing with the others, though. Yeah. I'm not about to try and cut Temper down. Just knock him out with a good hit to the head. But first, I gotta corner him. He spins and swings the glowing chains as I slash at the area in front of him. With each step I take forward, he takes one step back. Distance is to his advantage, and we both know it. I fight the urge to laugh. It's so different from training with Nisus. This is real. I should be more scared. But I'm not. I feel a rush. The blood pumping through my veins, my muscles contracting as I make another attack. I feel alive. But, temp but temper is no slouch either. One chain hits me in the shoulder. The other spins around, spins around my left hand. The possum yanks it back and the sword flies from my grasp. Before it's even done clattering across the floor, however, it vanishes and reforms in my hand. As I prepare to strike again, a new round of gunfire erupts, but it doesn't hit me this time. Confused, I turn my helmet slightly, only to notice how far I've gotten from the bar. And there's Omen, two gunmen going at him from both sides. I lunge ahead, panic rising in my chest. The bullets fly wildly in all directions, no doubt deflected by the spell he mentioned earlier. It just needs to hold for another fraction of a second. <laughs> nope, 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 okay, I fucked up there. Y'all, I, I fucked up. Uh, let's see. Auto save should be. There we go. All right. All right. On the other hand, hmm. on the other hand, I'd rather not leave myself exposed like that, or rather leave Omen exposed. I can worry about dealing a knockout to Temper once the Martin is safely out of the fray, which, granted, is easier said than done. The possum spins his chains in an impressive display of prowess, twisting them so they hit me from unexpected angles. I'd be in a whole lot of trouble if I wasn't wearing armor that renders those attacks pretty much pointless. The metal glows and sizzles where hit, without the heat reaching me inside. I block the next attack with the sword. Immediately after, the second chain wraps around it. Temper wrenches it out of my hand with a twist of his arm. His satisfaction is short-lived, though, as the sword immediately reforms in my hand. Still, these short exchanges can go on can go on forever. I need to make a move. The two blocking your way to the exit are the main issue. Hey, Omen! Give me a bottle or something! His furry arm emerges, emerges from his hideout and pushes a bottle across the counter before disappearing. Wasting no time, I grab it and chuck it at the possum. The chain shatters it in midair, briefly igniting the alcohol inside as the liquid splatters onto the ground. 
I turn and rush at the two gunmen. Clearly panicked, the nearest one launches a volley of gunfire at me. A fish to his jaw puts it puts a quick end to that. As the first one is reeling, I pivot to the other one. But the chain wraps around my wrist again, stopping my attack. All while bullets rain at me from the front. Maybe not a bad thing, because that gives me an idea. I grab the chain in my fist, feeling only a slight warmth as the gauntlet's metal sizzles. With the chain wrapped around both our wrists like this, I can just pull my pull the possum to me. Uh huh. Turning, I see the surprise in Temper's eyes when I suddenly jerk him towards me. Naturally, he resists. With the bracelet strengthening me, though, I have the upper hand. He slides across the dance floor. I just need him to ra I just need him in range to deliver a good punch to the jaw. But even as our eyes are locked, the possum grits his teeth, and suddenly the glow of this chain intensifies. That's when I notice the mild warmth is turning into a scorching heat. My gauntlet starts to rapidly heat up. No, all my armor! Panicking, I let the chain go and try to yank it off my arm, but it's too late. My body is burning. The arm- oh god, the armor sears my skin. Ah! Somehow through the pain, I make the armor disappear. Oh man, that was not a good idea. Man, I fucked up again! Uh, load, okay. Damn! Okay. With an annoyed grunt, I wrench my wrist free, noting how my gauntlet has started to heat up. But then the gunmen had have, have had a chance to retreat, still firing at me to cover their escape. Oh, man. Alright, yeah, I'm gonna pause it right there. I've gotta get on call with my boyfriend. Alright. Thank you all so much for watching. I Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a super thanks, or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.